All right, let's move on to division for exponent laws. So just to kind of remind you of what we've already done, when I have x to the third times, or x to the fifth times x to the third, we discussed the fact that that is x to the eighth, right? You can use kind of the little rule that we learned where when it's set up like that and it's a repeated base, you add them together, right? So when it was multiplication, we added them together. What was actually happening if we go out to the expanded form is I actually have five X's being multiplied together, being multiplied by, whoops, three more X's being multiplied together. And so really when you look at that, it just means, oh, so really you've got eight X's all multiplied together by itself, okay? So that's definitely what's happening there. So if we switch it just a little bit and say X to the fifth over X to the third, well, when it was multiplication, we added them together. So it kind of makes sense that I would subtract these two for division and get X squared. Okay, so that's really all it is, is you're gonna subtract in a division problem, sorry, five minus three, if I could write the right thing. So you're gonna be subtracting. Now let's look at why that happens by looking at the expanded form. If I have X to the fifth, two, three, four, five, divided by X to the third, anytime you have something divided by itself, it cancels out and becomes a one, right? X divided by X, that actually equals one. X divided by X cancels itself out and actually equals one. X divided by X cancels itself out and actually equals one. So here I can definitely see the X squared, X times X is X squared. These ones up here, remember this is all a multiplication problem. So one times one times one is still just one. So if you wanted to put a one in front to kind of represent all of those that canceled out, you can, but we know that you don't have to have a coefficient in front of a variable. So it's just X squared. Again, it goes back to you're canceling out and then I've got two extra X's being multiplied together on the top. The shortcut is, oh my goodness. The shortcut is to just subtract those two exponents. So if I say, okay, well, X to the 11th divided by X to the fourth, okay, my, my rule, my shortcut, I could actually draw out my 11 X's and my four, or I could say, you know what, I'm just gonna end up subtracting them. And when I subtract 11 minus four, I'll end up with seven, and those extras will all be up in the top of my fraction. Now you notice I keep mentioning the fact that they end up in the top. Well, let's look at why I'm bringing that up because it's kind of a big deal. So if I switch it just a little bit and say X to the fourth over X to the 11th, same exact problem, I've just reversed which is which. Well, in this situation, I would end up with four minus 11 is negative seven, right? Okay, that's simple enough. But one of our simplifying rules is that we're not allowed to leave a negative exponent on something. So there's gotta be a different way to represent this value. So let's see how else I can represent this. I'm gonna use the expanded form. So X to the fourth means I actually have four X's there on the top being multiplied together. X to the 11th, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 X's in the denominator. Then if I think about, okay, anytime something's divided by itself, it cancels out and becomes a one, cancels out and becomes a one, cancels out, becomes a one, cancels out, becomes a one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is kind of what we were imagining up here. But where are those X's being multiplied by itself seven times? Well, it's actually down here in the denominator. So I'm gonna write this as X to the seventh, but down in the denominator. Well, what's in the numerator now? All I really have is a bunch of ones. One times one times one times one is one, okay? This is actually one of the exponent laws that's on your little foldable. If you go back and look at it, you will see that negative exponents at the very bottom 
change the sign or sorry, use the reciprocal. So it, it pushes it into the denominator. We'll get to this in a minute where if it's already in the denominator, it actually pushes it up into the numerator. So we're gonna have to simplify those. All right, so when you get raised to a negative exponent, what's actually happening there is it's indicating that it's in the other part of the fraction, okay? So it has to push it down into the denominator. And it makes sense, okay? Here's how I think about it. You subtract the values, 11 minus four, 11 minus four. We get x to the seventh. There's gonna be seven extras in both of these problems. The only difference is in this problem, my seven extras are gonna end up in the numerator because that's where I had more x's to begin with, where the number was higher. In this problem, I'm gonna have seven extra x's in the denominator, so that's where they're gonna end up in my simplified answer is in the denominator, okay? So um, if we have a problem like x to the third over x to the 15th, you subtract those and get x to the 12th, and I'm not even gonna think about positive 12 or negative 12, I'm just gonna go, well, there's 12 extra x's once I cancel out three of them, and they will be in the denominator, okay, with a one on top. It's not too tricky. You're just thinking about where they're ending up, okay? If we throw coefficients on here and we say, uh, let's do two x squared, over 6x to the 6th. All right. Well, the coefficients, remember, behave differently. You're not going to be subtracting when it's a base. This is an actual fraction, 2 sixths. 2 sixths, you're going to simplify down to 1 third. And again, we that's one of your simplifying rules. You have to have simplified fractions, right? And then x squared over x to the 6th. Well, I'm going to subtract those exponents and get x to the fourth, and where are my extras gonna be? Those four extras are actually gonna be in the bottom once I cancel things out, okay? So again, it goes back to coefficients behave differently. In both situations, I had a two and a six, but when it's numbers, they simplify to one third. When it's exponents, you actually subtract them and get raised to the fourth power, okay? Uh, adding on just a teeny tiny bit, if I start combining multiple things in my division, so let's say I have 18x squared y to the fifth over 24x to the fourth y to the fourth. I'm gonna look at this as three many division problems, okay? So first I have 18 over 24. So 18 and 24 will both simplify by six. If I divide by six, because this is a fraction, so I'm just simplifying the fraction, I'm gonna say, okay, well, that's gonna go down to three. 18 divided by six is three. 24 divided by six is four. All right, now I'm gonna look at my x's. Well, I'm gonna subtract their exponents. So four minus two is two. It's gonna be x squared, and then I'm gonna think, well, where do I have more extras to begin with? Well, x squared will be in the denominator because that's where it was higher to start. And then for my y's, I'm gonna subtract their exponents too. So five minus four is one. So y to the one, and let's see, I'm gonna have more in the top. So that's where it's gonna start, or where it's gonna end up. You don't have to put this raised to the one power, okay? but you can, it's not gonna hurt anything. Now, my fractions are simplified. I don't have any, any repeated bases. I don't have power to a power, anything like that. It's just simply subtracting your exponents and paying attention to where they are. All right, well, what if I end up with something like x to the third divided by x to the third? If I follow my rule and I subtract these things, x to the third divided, okay, three minus three would actually mean x to the zero power. Well, that's a little bit odd. Um, having a, a zero exponent, what does that mean? It doesn't mean I've got like, you know, normally we say, oh, x to the two means there's two x's, x to the fourth means there's four x's. Well, this is saying there's no x's. Well, let's think about it a different way because this is confusing. What's anything divided by itself? 
How many x to the thirds go into x to the third? Well, that's one. Okay, that's been a rule for a long time, that anything divided by itself is one. 100 divided by 100 is one. Seven divided by seven is one. So even when it's weird, x to the third divided by x to the third, you end up with one. Well, I've solved this problem two different ways, and they're both totally true. So that means when you have a zero exponent, it actually equals one, okay? Um, just to kind of make you think about this a different way. If I have, I'm gonna use a different letter. A to the third means A times A times A, right? A squared means A times A. A to the one means A. Well, A to the zero means I don't have anything there. And it's really tempting to think that it should be zero, but the problem is, what coefficient can I always put in front of these? I can always say one times that, and one times that, and one times that. So when I remove all the a's, I'm actually left over with a one, okay? So anything raised to the zero power ends up being a one. Even if I give you a big, nasty, disgusting, negative 247, x to the fifth, y to the 23rd, z to the negative ninth, all those weird values raised to the zero power, once it's raised to the zero power, it just becomes a one, okay? All right, I'll do another video with more difficult combination problems, but that's at least kind of a rundown of the basics.